Welcome back to Obermott Stock Search and Stock Investing. Today I want to do something different from normally. I attended a 100 year celebration of a company here in Switzerland and I was really impressed of the company. They have a very good management team that I know for a long time. They're a solid industrial conglomerate. They have very good tools in managing their company and a, an exactly exceptional uh, cultural environment for the people that work there. So I came back home and I thought this time I'm going to invest in this company. And what I did is I went to my website and I looked at the ratings. And it turns out that their value rating is below 50. Their safety rating and growth ratings are even lower. So the financials actually say it's not a good company. And since I was there and I thought this is really a good company, I really like to invest in that company, I went to Reuters to verify the numbers. And it turns out the numbers are also on Reuters are roughly the same than the ratings that we have at Obermott. And I came to the conclusion I'm not investing in this company. It's a good company, I like the product, I like the management team, but the financials just, you know, say it's probably not that attractive right now to invest in this company because uh, people already realized it's an attractive company and it has a high share price. So uh, instead of doing that, uh, which I think is a good reason not to invest, um, I looked again at the top 10 list. But before I say this, this weekend we also had the big issues of Greece here in Europe. And of course, everybody was um, uh, frightened by the drop in stock prices yesterday. Now, this maybe scare you off and you say like, oh, well, with this stock markets dropping everywhere, I don't want to invest in stocks. But actually, you should look at it at this very different. You should look at it like the summer sale. You know, suddenly everything is cheaper. And when you buy now, you get a much better deal. Nobody worries that when the prices in the department stores are going down in summer, that suddenly their whole inventory at home is worth less which actually is the case, you know, the reference prices are lower. They're happy that they can now buy at lower prices. And that, that's exactly what I think. Very good, now I can buy stocks at lower prices. Let's go to the Obermott Top 10 list from this Friday, July 3rd, which happens to be my wedding day. And I have planned a few nice things to do there. Now, on July 3rd, we'll show Thailand and Singapore. Uh, these are both markets that I'm not, I don't want to invest because my financial plan tells me to invest in Europe. So I go to the top 10 uh, uh, focus markets and I'm going to see what I have there. And really, I actually have published something for Europe. So it might be that we find a stock that we like. Let's go and look at the climate protection stocks for Europe. Another thing here to say, climate protection stocks means these are stocks that have less CO2 footprint, less carbon hydrate, uh, carbon uh, CO2 emissions than other companies in their industry. So they are better prepared for climate change. These are the climate protection leaders that we have identified at Obermott. Do they have less returns in the future? I don't think so. There's no reason to assume that any criteria you use to select your stocks should have less returns in the futures, future than all the other criteria, because if that were the case, there are a lot of hedge fund managers that have already shortened this stock and it's more valuable today to buy. It's, you buy it at a better price. So don't worry when you use social, ecological and governance criteria to invest in stocks it doesn't mean you're going to get less return. But of course, it also doesn't mean you're going to get more return. But you may feel more comfortable with it. So I'm looking at the combined list of uh, the CO2, uh, CO2 leaders in emerging Europe, interesting market, and in Africa, which we put together for practical purposes. We have a drug retailer in South Africa now. My financial plan tells me to invest in Europe, so South Africa is out of the question. You know, this would be something interesting, but I'm not investing in finance right now, as I outlined earlier. Food retail, this is an interesting company. It's extra, extra large. This is something I'm gonna look at. It has still a decent value. It doesn't have a lot of growth, which I think, you know, is expected if you invest it. If you look at Portugal right now, they go through a difficult phase, but they have a lot of safety. Let's have a look at Ceronimo Martins. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly, but 
I don't think um, you know pronouncing it correctly qualifies you as a better investor or worse investor. Um, there's more in South Africa. There's something in Spain, but I just bought something in Spain, so I rule Spain out. Actually, these are all Spanish and South African companies. So the only company I really want to look at is this um, Geroni, Geroni, Geronimo uh, Martins, how I would pronounce it as a Swiss uh, a mother tongue person. Um, it's not only a climate protection stock, it's also a sound incentive stock. So sound incentives are all those companies where the incentives of management and shareholders are better aligned than in other companies. Um, let's look a little bit at their finances. Um, you know, why is the value rank 67? They actually have a very good dividend yield. They have a very good price earning ratios. They're a little bit pricey in respect to the revenues and a little bit pricey in respect to invested capital. But I really like this. Profits and even dividends are really high. This is a good reason to buy. How does it look with growth? Oh, their main problem is the stock return rank. Now, I'm not worried about that because uh, I'm more worried about the operating area sales. They're growing sales. They're not growing profits so much, but you would expect that if a company grows a lot in sales. How can it grow in profits as well at the same time? Because typically you have to spend money to grow in sales. And if we go back down to the liquidity is very high and the leverage is not that high. This is an interesting company from a financial perspective. Let's look at it in more detail. Of course, it all starts in Portuguese. I want to have it in English and they even have it in English. That's a very good sign. Let's see what their website says in English. We are the largest food distribution group in Portugal and Poland. So they're actually active with food distribution in two emerging European countries. I think that's a really interesting business. It's a little bit a real estate business because for food distribution, you actually need real estate and real estate prices can determine the value of this company as well. I know that real estate prices are depressed in Portugal, probably in Poland as well. That's a good reason to buy, I think. Uh, let's have a look at what the group actually does. Um, Maybe there's an overview. Uh, Portuguese, 200 years of history in the food industry. Company profile in detail. Um, let's have a look what they're doing. $12 million in revenues, food distribution, food manufacturing and services, and almost a billion in cash flow. This is really good. They have three business segments the way uh, you know it looks. Distribution, where it actually has chains that actually have stores, different stores, uh, not just one brand. That's also a good idea. They manufacture uh, for Unilever. I like that as well. And they provide services. The group includes an, an area direct marketing representation, restaurant services and specialist retail businesses. Interesting. Lots of brands, lots of basic stuff. A real estate exposure in emerging Europe. I like that. Let's have a look at the company itself. Let's look at the board of directors. Is it also as male, you know, dominant as the Spanish company that we looked at last time? Actually, they have a woman. <laughs> Not bad. They have one woman. They have a young CEO. Uh, I wonder what his background is. Is he from, you know, um, okay, he worked in sales and marketing since uh, in, in the food industry for a long time until he was appointed managing director at, in 95 at one of the Cer, Ceronimo Martins companies. He ran Poland and Brazil in 99 and he took over the group's distribution area later and became CEO in 2010 and chairman of the board of directors in 2013. So she, he's, a risk. he's a risk. He's he double, he doubles as chairman and CEO. I would say that's a little risk. Let's look who else is important in this company. Let's go to investors. Let's see if they have some information about the share holdings in this company. Um, uh, so here are the shares actually uh, of that company. Key figures, dividend, interactive share price, capital structure. This is something I'm interested in. I want to know if there are checks and balances in the company or if this company is just run by one single person. Qualified shareholders, that's what I want to have a look at. And it, there is actually one 
Sociedade Francisco Manuel uh, dos Santos. Let's have a look what Google tells me about this company. I have here uh, from Google, a lot actually is on that website we just visited. Um, Dos Santos, do we have anything? That sounds interesting. There's something about the familia. Okay, this we need to translate. For that, fortunately, we have, um, let's see, can translate to English here. Let's say, um, doesn't seem to be doing it yet. Translate to English. Now it's ready. Google took a while to understand what this website has. Okay, it's a family. So it's actually owned by a family and moved to Stockton, the Netherlands. Probably, yeah, for tax reasons, I guess that's understandable, even though I prefer people who pay their taxes in their home country. But you know, this is a good sign. The company is run by a family. So there is, is a lot of balance towards um, towards the, the CEO, who is both CEO and chairman. Let's look Aberdeen as a managers limited. That's a company I've heard uh, before. You might be aware of them already. Uh, it's an investment management group um, from Scotland. There's something on Wikipedia about it. Management pie out in 1983. Lots of growth. Finance is a boat race. I'm a big fan of boats. Um, yeah, sometimes you know you buy stocks for emotional reasons, but it's a large group. Uh, it's a large group. Um, so there is a professional group that is invested in this company as well. I would think that makes it kind of a safe buy. Uh, now we come to the last challenge, which is to find it in my e-banking. Um, here you see the stocks, you know, they have dropped. Some of them have dropped, uh, not the Italian one though. Uh, no wonder with this current market environment, but we are not so interested in past performance. We are interested in the future. That's why we buy. And we are buying stocks. And I'll make that a little bit bigger for you. Now I have to make sure I, I spell this correctly. Um, Geronimo, Geronimo, huh? Geronimo, Geronimo Martins. Let's see if they find it. Yes, this time they're fast. Maybe they have watched my videos. And um, oh, this is, I need to make it smaller again. Yeah, this is what I should have printed, uh, uh, pushed uh, weiter, you know, go on, look at this stock. It's available for 11 euro 50. Let's have a look at how much that is in Swiss francs, euro. It's actually always almost the same. It's around 12. Let's divide 5,000 by 12 to see how many shares you want to buy. Let's buy 400 shares of this company. 400 shares and we buy best. We have no limit. We buy it at Euronext London. We could also buy it someplace else. I buy it in the Euronext. I think that's the best place for this to buy. It's also suggested 4,600 euro. And I push Ausführen. Uh, they have accepted my order to buy Cero Ceronimo Martins and over the next week, I will try to remember this name, this company name. It's a company I don't know, but I think everything around this company is, is, um, is, is good for me. It's in markets I'm not. It's in real estate and basic services. It's an, a company I understand fully, and I think that's a good reason to buy. It would not be a good reason not to buy just because in Greece, we have some problems. We know about these problems for a long time. So we can assume these problems are factored into the price already. And since the prices just came down because everybody is scared right now, we are getting the stocks cheaper and that's good for us as long-term investors. Goodbye. See you next time with Ramat Investing.